This is the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second ever episode of the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. I'm Chad Holloway, joined by Jesse Fullen, and we've got a very exciting show, my friend. We have legendary WSOP commentator Lon McCarron coming up later on in this episode. We're going to chat to him about the WSOP, about the Tournament of Champions, some of his favorite memories. It's going to be a conversation you don't want to miss. And Jesse, we've got some other exciting stuff to talk about before we do. I think you want to thank one of our sponsors. That's right, Chad. We want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Global Poker. They've got a brand new series kicking off June 5th. It's the Bounty Series number five. These have amazing trophies, Chad. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Well, up above me is the Rattlesnake Trophy from the recent Rattlesnake Open 6. But no, no, no. These, uh, the Bounty Series, it's a gold skull with a big spade branded into it. It's really awesome, sick looking. But <clears throat> all that said, starting June 5th through the 11th, there are 68 trophies up for grabs mm -hmm. for one week, Monday through Sunday, 34 on the gold coin side, 34 on the sweeps coin side, including a sweeps coin 440K guarantee. Uh, pretty sick. I'll be in there playing. I hope you are too. And uh, just check out Global Poker if you guys haven't yet. It's a lot of fun to play on. I mean, clearly their trophy game is on point. Like that thing is pretty sick. <clears> and <throat> the ones you just described, like, come on, get, let's get some Global yeah, if, Poker nominated uh, for, you know, award of the year. I, would, I think they definitely are eligible for a, a GPI for that trophy of the year. My goodness. All right. So with that, let's uh, let's move on to tr other trophies, uh, like a little gold bracelet, Chad. Yeah. Uh, event one. <laughs> <son of> a... <laughs> Ten event. years ago. Ten years ago, that one came my way. <sighs> Anyways, event number one of the 2023 WSOP has ended. It was the Casino Employees event. And uh, we've got a quick interview to throw in here um, from the floor with uh, myself interviewing it. Oh, so let's, let's go ahead and jump to it. Let's check it out. Hello, I'm Jesse from Poker News here at event one of the World Series of Poker, the 2023 edition. We're in the $500 Casino Employees event, day two. And it started with 89 runners left out of over 1,000. But we are here to chat with one of the day two chip leaders at the start of the day, Jesse Fullen from Poker News. Jesse, how is it going? Uh, hey, man, it's been it's been pretty crazy. I'm I'm really excited. Thank you so much for the, bringing me on to the, the uh, interview this morning. Um, by the way, I love your shirt. I'm a big fan of Glow Poker too, obviously. Um, but yeah, man, you know it's a it's a bracelet event. I'm excited. Excellent, excellent, good to hear. All right, Jesse. So um, you know, Chad Holloway has won a bracelet in this event ten years ago. As another employee of Poker News, making a deep run, what uh, what stress do you feel? Are you are you are you tense about this? You know, I, I understand. You know, tense. No, no, because that was ten years ago. People have forgotten about his bracelet. No, I mean, you know. If it's that long, no one remembers, no one cares. I'm not tense. If I win, great. If I don't, I wish I had one. Absolutely. Okay. You know, Alan Kessler always says the Casino Employees event bracelet is not a real bracelet. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I mean, obviously we know Alan Kessler has some hot takes on food. They're wrong. And his bracelet takes are usually wrong as well. His structure takes are pretty, pretty freaking good, though. I like his structure takes. But, yeah, no, this is a real bracelet. Sorry, Alan. It's real. Last question before you get back to the table. Jesse, if you were to win a bracelet, would you come back into work tomorrow? Am I coming back to work tomorrow? Yori, are you watching this? Um, I have a wife and kids. I guess I have to if they make me. I would prefer to stay home. Uh-oh, because that's, uh, that's my job, too. So, okay, well we'll, well, we'll see how it runs. We'll see how it goes, Jesse. Thanks so much for this chat with Jesse Fullen, day two, uh, one of the chip leaders here in the Casino Employees event. Good luck at that bracelet run. Back to everybody else. See you guys later. Okay, well, Chad, can you believe that I interviewed myself? How, uh, how what the magic of computers? And how shit. pretentious I, of you! You didn't even ask me. You could ask me. No, I'm sad. No. Oh, you were <laughs> already busted by that point. Unfortunately, that's actually yeah. true. What what so, place did you finish in? So it's funny because after last uh, last week's show with Ty Stewart, the three of us finished up here and went and late regged into the casino employees event. And we actually all three did pretty well uh as we're going to talk about ty stewart did fall just short of the money but he was making a deep run which i thought was pretty cool he makes and, enough money already as the top guy the top yeah, come right? on he doesn't need our money <laughs> we ended up both bagging for day two so this tournament got a thousand and fifteen runners and i've been playing this thing every year since i won it 10 years ago and i've never done anything never bagged for day two never cashed it uh so but 
We made into the money. So I was pretty excited about that. And then ended up bagging. I think there were 89 players who advanced. And I was sitting, I think, 59th in chips, a little below average, nothing too special. But you, on the other hand, my friend, just caught fire and bagged the second biggest stack in the tournament. Yeah, I was definitely a chip leader for a few minutes. A few golden minutes, I was the chip leader. And then somebody won a big pot and I my table abused me the last order or two just trying to say you you don't want to lose those chips we know it so we're gonna we're gonna take them from you um i bagged 861 i think 861k and um the chip leader was 880 so i mean i was so close um but man that was so much fun it was so fun that, that late day one run um going to trying to go to sleep knowing like holy shit i have a i have a i mean this is my second time playing the casino employees. I was I was sick last year. I missed it, unfortunately. But I, I played, I bagged, I made the money in uh, my one two years ago, um, finished 42nd. So, uh, but but that day there was nothing eventful. Like I came in, didn't win a single hand and just, you know, just fizzled out. This time I, I had a great, what you know, coming in the day two is this number two chip stout. And uh, then it, I fizzled, but I had, I kept my stack for a while. I got up to like, I think 900K at one point, then went back down and I just had some, crazy good players at my table that just uh, would not let me try anything. I tried something, they're like, eh, let's try harder. I'm like, I, 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 I give up, I give up, I give up. <laughs> it was fun. We didn't get to play each other uh, at, no, really, not at, at all. all. Yeah, during it. Uh, I came all. in today too, like I said, kind of on the shorter side of things and just lost two flips and that was it for me i was out in 60th place but you went a little bit deeper you ended up finishing in 33rd yep 33rd place not too bad for the chad and jesse poker show you know to no, go from this no. and then both cash come on yeah well you finished in 60th 60th yeah, yeah that's almost, pretty bad you, you know, should have done better i finished 33rd so almost come, twice we should just call this the chat the jesse and chad show now well, well maybe if you would maybe this? if you get one of it? these on your shelf over there let me see it man fucking know. throw it out in the hallway you this almost i was rooting for you my friend i wanted so bad for you to make the final table I could have came. We would have, you know, the rail would have been one of the best. Yeah, but next year or another event later this year. Yori, Yori Epps Camp, another Poker News employee, was another one who made the money and made, uh, didn't didn't make day two, unfortunately, but another good run. Another, a brand new live reporter, Herbie, uh, made the money and also made day two with Chad and I. He finished just before you, I think, right? Or right, or somewhere in there? Yeah, he, he followed me to the payout line in, I think, yeah. like 58th place. But oh, a, gotcha. a nice run for him. You know, it was an actually an interesting final table. Uh, a guy we both know, James Urbanic, yep. was P there. P-Man. Yep, P-Man. P-Man Praise, we know him. Yeah. And he ended up taking second place, which was pretty impressive. Holy shit, man. I've known P-Man for years from Run It Up Reno. He used to come out there. One time he he wore a suit to like a, a charity event dressed as the Joker, like a, all, all these ha-ha-has all over it. He's a great young kid. He's, he's a lot of fun. Um, he's now a dealer slash floor over at Sahara Poker Room. He's been there for a while, and um, and he's taking it very seriously. I talked to him a little bit at the table, saying like, "No, what's your what are your career goals, man?" You know, and he he loves to play poker. He doesn't know if he wants to continue to be a floor into management yet, but he actually he's been doing some crazy video editing with Jungle Man. I don't know if you've seen these. I know you haven't. I know how busy you are, Chad. But uh, but check out some of the content coming out of Jungle Man, uh, Dan Cates, because. P-Man has been on the editing side of that, and that's what the stuff he really likes is uh, this video creation stuff. Really cool. Really cool guy. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for him to make that second place. 45K is sick. However, there was a winner. Yes. Joining me in the ranks of winners of the Casino Employee event, Jesse. Just saying. It was Peter Ty. He ends up taking this thing down for $75,000 in the first bracelet of the 2023 WSOP. So a big congratulations to him, but not the only bracelet winner. There's only been two so far as we're recording this. There'll be, I think, two more awarded today, or at least one more today. Uh, and then, of course, the train will keep on rolling down the tracks. But it was the $25,000 high roller, 207 runners, and it was a st absolutely stacked field uh, and a stacked final table. Very entertaining final table. Some unbelievable hands. I think there was a runner, runner quads. We've got an article up on Poker News recapping some of those. And in the end, it was uh, Switzerland's Alexandre Vulamir. I know I butchered it. Going to you know continue that tradition. Defeating Chance Corneth, which is something that doesn't happen often. Somebody beating Chance Corneth, but <laughs> uh, wins it for $1.2 million and cool. a bracelet. So Pretty decent. Over the Tournament of Champions, my former boss, Jason Somerville, is still 
at least he started the day with uh, 20 bigs. My, I'm, I brought my run-up shirt uh, to hopefully rail him today. I, uh, I really hope that he makes that run for a second bracelet. He won a circuit ring. I completely missed this in January, an online circuit ring. I just, I mean, you know, I have... I mean, it's not, <clears throat> not to take away from an online circuit ring. Like, it's great. I would love to win one. But as far as making headlines, you know, like, it does, it's not as much, uh, you know, in, in the news, if you will, as the live ones. So. His, uh, his online screen name is Haterade. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so hopefully Jay, Jay Carver will make a deep run and uh, maybe this will be the rebirth of Ryan up if he if he brings that second bracelet. Who knows, man? Who knows? All right. Well, uh, with that, we're going to uh, start to move into our, our segment that I love called Calling the Clock. Clock has been called. You now have two minutes to talk about these eight topics. At the end of 155, there'll be a five second countdown. If I say the word zero, that topic is dead. All right, it's time for Calling the Clock with me and Chad. We've got eight brand new topics this week. We're going to hit some Hustle Casino Live and all sorts of other crazy stuff that's uh, been around the, the Twitter and the poker landscape. But let's get started. Two minutes on the clock, and let's go. Hustle Casino Live, massive hand. We filmed last week, and we were like, eh, it's been okay. And then they just completely blew us away. Like, I mean, my God, Tom Dwan wins the largest cash pot in live stream history, $3.1 million. Chad. What the hell? Yeah, I, I have to eat a little crow here because I was like, I don't know if this stream is a success based upon what we'd seen. We hadn't seen that final day yet. And because that was a, a grand slam, the lineup, the entertainment, the hands, clearly this history making hand, $3.1 million. Kudos to the Hustler Casino Live team. The viewership was there. You know, I, I do have to eat a little crow because it was a big success. And in this particular hand, man, Tom Dwan, old school legend, has always been fearless. You have Westside Wesley, who is also is fearless and making a name for himself on Hustler Casino Live. So this old school, new school kind of butting heads, if you will, with two big hands. Basically, what it was was Wesley had ace king uh, offsuit and Tom Dwan had queens. It ended up being a five bet pot preflop, I think 100K each. Uh, or I'm sorry, 275,000 each pre-flop comes 388 with two diamonds wesley has the just the ace of diamonds uh dwan check calls 125,000. that makes the pot 800,000. turn was an offsuit five and wesley who just has ace high right now jesse he fires out another massive wager this time 350,000. can't shake dur he ends up calling six of clubs on the river so flush draw misses and knowing that he can only win the pot with a bluff, Wesley puts Dwan to the test. He moves all in. Dwan has seven hundred eighty-six thousand dollars, almost you know three quarters of a million dollars back, and he hits the tank, decides what to do, ends up calling and wins. So before before yeah, so Wesley he he goes all in and he immediately covers his head, puts his head down. I mean like like a turtle. It's insane what he did where he just didn't want to give anything away. I mean, I remember back when Tom Dwan used to do these kinds of bluffs on high stakes poker on you know big televised televised episodes years ago. It's crazy to see him and the other and the other side with pocket queens. But what a freaking hand! What a fucking hand, dude! <laughs> what a motherfucking hand! I mean, amazing. He had to put him exactly on ace king, like maybe an ace king flush draw miss or something, because a five bet pot that big queens that's a tough spot right there. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's time to reset the clock. Thanks a lot, Chad. Let's move on to the next topic, which another another hustle casino live hand. Let's talk about uh, our friend Doug Polk. Doug Polk had to use the randomizer. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this yet, Chad. I, I know we talked about it a little bit, but Doug Polk gets pocket aces, ace black, ace red, and he's up against a shove from ace jack of diamonds bluffing, trying to represent a diamond flush because he had the jack or, or, or a diamond flush or a straight uh, of some sort straight of thing. Yeah, because yeah. he could have had jack 10. Um, I think that's what it was. Yeah. So all that said, the decision that Doug Polk has to make is, um, how often do I call here with aces without having an ace of diamonds or, you know, with, with, with what I've got? So he says out loud, I'm going to run a randomizer. I usually will probably call here 25% of the time, one in four. So to make a one in four uh, situation, I'm going to mix up my cards. And if I draw the ace of hearts twice, I call Tom Dwan or, or was, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Dwan says, is that binding? And uh, he says, yeah. So now the Jack 10 or the, I'm sorry, the ace Jack could have exposed his hand. And no matter what, Tom, uh, no, Doug could not call. He would have to pull. He shakes him up, shakes him up, shakes him up, draws the ace of spades and instantly has to fold. And I fucking loved it. What content, dude? Yeah, it's great content. It's bad, a, it's bad, a, move, bad fold. It's bad a, fold a, well, it's but. a shame that he drew the ace of spades first, right? Like yeah. at least let's get to the second 
pole. Give me some sweat. Exactly. Give that would have sweat. been that would have been the ultimate one. But I do like how he took the initiative and it kind of made a game of it for the viewers, right? So that people could play along or see it. Because uh, a lot of players might randomize by looking at a clock or doing something internally that takes uh, all of the excitement and oomph out of it. You know, those are the robots we talk about in the poker world. And here you have Polk being an extrovert, letting the viewers get in on it. Uh, in it, it was fun. It was exciting. I'd like to see more of that sort of thing. You know, if you want to be that person who is doing the math and randomizing, at least find a way. Get the uh, viewers involved. Get the rest of the table involved. That's a good dynamic. I like it. Before Doug came out, he said he wanted to play some big pots. You know, he talked about his action he sold, but he wanted to make some crazy hands. He wanted to win the biggest hand or be in it, he said, you know, on, on social. And so I think this, to show like this kind of personality was fun. I, I love seeing it. I think that was kind of really made the Hustler Casino live stream something I really want to watch again. Yeah, it was good to see some fun stuff with Doug after a little bit of drama in recent uh, weeks or months. But uh, Enough talking about Doug drama. Let's reset the clock. Next topic. <laughs> What's a hot one? Yeah, more drama. Accused cheaters at the WSOP. Chad, um, will you start this one, please? Yeah, so I guess it kind of started before the WSOP with the 25K fantasy draft that Daniel Negreanu does every year. We're going to talk about that uh, as one of the other topics. But he basically said, you know what? Aliam Surovich, Jake Schindler, these guys are going to be ineligible to be drafted because of the cheating accusations that have been leveled against them. Uh, that hasn't stopped them from playing here at the World Series in the past. Jake Schindler ended up winning a bracelet last year. He actually already made a final table here, the 25K high roller. Uh, he ended up not winning that, busting fairly early, I think. Uh, but he's here, and uh, so are some others. There's been rumors that some of the other big names, if you will, in the cheating allegation world may make an appearance at the World Series of Poker. I don't know. I think the question, the debate is, should something be done? Can anything be done? Uh, and... I don't think it's an easy answer because I think that uh, the World Series of Poker, Caesars, is beholden to certain laws, rules, regulations. Uh, so they can't just willy-nilly say, hey, based off these allegations, we're not going to let you in. Uh, Poker Go, other places, uh, you know, Poker Go Studio might have a little more leeway to do that sort of thing, but uh, not really here at the World Series. I wish they could. I wish that they could go out there and every one of those motherfuckers who have, have been fucking up and making everybody upset. Like, and, and there's, I mean, we... Just, I well, so wish we could just have him banned out. And you I know, wish. where is this, uh, the Poker Integrity Council that was so lauded uh, in 2021 as supposed to come up with this list that everybody can refer to and, you know, use as a, a justice basis. To Jason to, Kuhn, where are you, buddy? I mean, it does seem like it's lost a little steam. You don't really hear about it anymore. And uh, perhaps we should, because I think if that were to have a lot of support and other tours and other organizations were to use it, it would give the World Series of Poker or these other tours, they could come together better and maybe do something about it. But as it is right now, unless you're banned 86 from Caesars property or the blacklist from Nevada or something, if you have the buy-in, you can show up and play. All right, let's reset the clock. Our next topic is traffic. Traffic around the WCP. Dude, it's been horrible. <laughs> you, Fucking horrible. You literally texted me because I was running late for this very show because uh -huh. I was stuck in traffic. It's the Formula One racing coming to Las Vegas in November. They're redoing the streets. They're they're just, it's everywhere. And it's, it's all around the Horseshoe, all around the Strip. And it's even out in the suburbs a little bit. There's just been so much traffic uh, that it's, it's a daily, it's going to be a daily occurrence for the, uh, probably the duration of the WSOP and people are going to have to learn different routes, different means to get here. You and I are Las Vegas locals. So we know a little <laughs> tricks. Uh, Chad's been here for like 12 hey, minutes. No, I've been here for like 12 months, but uh, you know, and I've spent every summer here since 2009. What you were still Sleeping back in, in hotel well, you were still count. back in Texas wearing diapers or doing whatever, you know, I still wear a diaper motherfucker. <laughs> God, no, but yeah, fuck? traffic has, has been bad. And, uh, you know, we just have to take it into account. But uh, we both made day two of the casino employees event. There were there were two spots on our, my table. People weren't there until 30 minutes in and they got stuck in traffic. It's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, there's there one guy at my table who was from the northwest side like me. And I, I told him like the route he should have taken. He's like, where were you yesterday to tell me this? Because I he was he was stuck for so long and he was so frustrated and mad. Like it was just Horrible, 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 horrible. So uh, luckily the monorail exists. If you, if you do experience traffic, you can come from the north or south side, take the monorail. That's the easiest fucking way by far. Otherwise, I'm telling you, the secret road is taking um, taking Harmon, which curves around from Valley View by the Rio. Basically, go back to the Rio. 
go to Rio, then leave the parking lot, take Valley View next to it, and that goes by Aria, and then you just find Audrey, and that takes you behind the back road. You don't even touch the strip besides crossing it, an area that's already been done. They've already finished that part. So that's that's the secret. I mean, that's, that's if you're taking an Uber, taking a limo, taking a taxi, taking a ride from a friend or a stranger who you just met on the side of the road, take that route because that's the way to get here. I'm telling, I'll be doing it all summer long. Let's reset the clock. Next one, Chad, is table needling. This, uh, is this an issue here at the WCP? It's funny because when you brought this up, I was taken a little by surprise because I haven't really experienced it or seen it, but apparently it is. Other players are experiencing it or, or you know, being the subject, uh, the victim of needling, if you will. Uh, and it's a weird, I said, let's put it in there because it's a, it's a weird thing for me. I'm the type of person who, if I'm at the table and somebody's needling me, I'm probably going to either get, give it back to them uh, or shut it down. You know, if it's inappropriate needling or abuse or something like that, I won't hesitate to say something. I won't hesitate to call over the floor. Um, and I'm probably more comfortable than most people doing that because I've been around the industry so long. The way this topic came about is we started hosting Twitter spaces on our Poker News channel on Twitter. And um, I'm going to do this every day before we, so on Mondays and Thursdays before we record on Tuesday and Friday. And someone from the community suggested this. And it wasn't just talking about needle like I haven't experienced it. I'm sure you haven't either. But other people at our tables have of someone talking shit to each other. And the question was, like, should we self-police? Do we, do we have to self-police? Do we have to call a floor over? And should the floor be ready to, I mean, how do we, how do we make the, I mean, the whole goal is to make poker accessible for everybody and fun for everyone and enjoyable. And so if there's some douchebag at the table who just can't relent and can't talk to you about bad beats or some bullshit, somebody, we got to stop it. Yeah. In an ideal world, the floor might see it, the dealers might see it and speak up. But I do think we need to be more proactive and self police because the dealers, a lot of them are new, right? And a lot of them are just focused on running a clean, smooth game operationally wise and not worrying about the players. They might be intimidated themselves. And the floormen, while they have the authority, they're spread all over the place. They're running around. So you just got to bring it to their attention. The problem with self policing, though, is now you got a player who hates you. Because when you call them out, fuck, that target's now on your back. And now why should I have to accept that? Why should I have to have a target on my back because I because I have to protect this little lady from this douchebag who's next to her? I mean, I, it's, I, I think self-policing is the way we have to do it, but I hate it, and I, I wish there was a better route. Okay, let's reset the clock and move on. Down to Granu or Phil Helmuth, first skip bracelet. Um, I know for me, it's obviously Phil Helmuth. I love you, Daniel. Daniel, I love you very much. You're, we're both residents of the west side of Vegas. You have a nicer house than mine. But uh, I, I think that it's been too long. I don't think you remember how it went in bracelet. So I think it's going to be Phil Helmuth who's going to be first. Chad, who do you think? You know, I would usually say Phil Helmuth. I think I predicted that in our annual Poker News prediction piece. But then Phil Helmuth invited me into his little break room area here <laughs> at the World Series of Poker to show off what his snacks are going to be for the WSOP. You know, I thought maybe if I go in there and he's got some meal prep, he's got some salads, he's got... Uh, brain know, fuel. Yeah, brain fuel. But brain fuel. we go in there and he, he's he got his beef jerky. He's got his uh, nutter butters. He's got his candy bars. He's got his jelly Sour beans. Punch kids. And uh, to his credit, he actually looked uh, fit, like fitter than I remember, like when he was on the high stakes duel. It's like, all right, Phil, you got to start hitting that gym because we've been in the gym with him before. We filmed him. You remember that one year at the World Series of Poker? I, it's, it's, it's ingrained <laughs> in my fucking memory. I wish I didn't remember. But he does, he does look like he's coming into the World Series of Poker uh, a little healthier, uh, which I think is is good. But based upon what I've seen in his room, I don't know if that's the fuel of of uh, you know getting to another bracelet. Whereas Daniel Negreanu, on the other hand, came into the WSOP having just leaned down, working out a lot. That's his routine. He likes to slim up because he knows he's going to put on 10 pounds or so here at the World Series. Uh, and I like that preparation. I'm sure he watched his Rocky movie, these the Creed movies. He does this every year. And it's been 10 years since he's won a bracelet at the World Series of Poker. I just feel like this is going to be the year. 2023, Negreanu gets a bracelet before Helmuth. Not saying it's not the year he gets a bracelet, but before Helmuth? Yeah, I don't I know, so. man. I don't know. I, I mean, bet you, I think either one of them, uh, one of the two of them will get a bracelet within the next, uh, I'll say, two weeks. It will happen sooner than later. I think to be Helmuth, obviously. Does Negreanu have an RV here? No, no, right? No yeah, that he needs an RV. But he's got a break room like Helmuth, and I guarantee you it's going to be stocked with a little bit healthier food, a little more... Uh, a little bit healthier. Yeah, and you know, he might be doing this caffeine. Who knows? Reset the clock. That's enough. Shut the fuck up for a minute. Time to reset, and we're going to move on to Helmuth's new tracksuit. Holy God. Hot or not, Chad, this is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what we're doing here. Um, <laughs> you've seen the white tracksuit. Yes. The Gucci white tracksuit. Um, 
I don't know if we're the, we're the two people who should be giving fashion advice. Laura, but, Laura, yeah. come in. Uh, I don't think she's around. She's busy. I'll, I'll say this. I, I actually kind of like it. I like uh, when he, you know, I remember when he brought out the the Phil Helmy with very bright gold shoes. Like he likes to make oh, a little statement. Oh, the gold statement. jacket too. I remember right. that too. And yeah. it's, uh, I like the, that sort of stuff much better than when he shows up wearing, you know, he and he's done this before where he's shown up wearing like sweatpants and a t-shirt. Right. It is that that's not the Phil Helmuth I like. I do like it when he's a little bit loud, if you will, when mm-hmm. it comes to his attire. And I really do like when he shows up like the World Series of Poker main event and he always has some sort of intro or some sort of costume. Yeah, it's pretty corny most times, but I like that. So your your response is hot. I think it's hot. Yeah. Hot oh, Helmuth. Someone <laughs> clip the shit out of that, please. My God. Um, yeah, I'm going to say not hot. Helmuth, obviously funny, funny outfit. But my man, let's just take you to Brooks Brothers. Let's 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 uh, you know. Uh, I I had to stop wearing goofy, funny T-shirts because I'm over forty years old. My kids told me stop doing that, Dad. Um, Phil, I'm here to be your your fake son here at the WSP. Dad, stop it, stop it. Don't pick me up from school wearing a white Gucci tracksuit. Please dress like a normal person. Oh my God, I can't look at you. I can't respond. I can't face no eye contact. Not hot. Not I would, hot. Get I would, out of it. I would Get be curious to know. Like if Helmut's at home and he comes down the stairs wearing that track sh- suit, what his wife or his kids like look at him and think, you know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they know, zip the lips. Yep. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I wonder how much it costs too. And I can probably oh. ask him. I'll see him this summer. Let's you know, find out. Let's find out. Someone put in the comments how much did that track suit costs. Over under 5K. Oh, higher. Higher? Over, oh. over, over for sure. Okay. It's time to reset the clock for our final topic, the 25 case fantasy draft. Chad, have you looked over the teams? I have. And this was, uh, so I love the fantasy draft. Uh, I've been there in person while they're drafting in the past. I usually do the uh, David Baker $500 smaller version. Unfortunately, I missed the deadline this year because we were in the casino employee event. It just, uh, I I, I was not happy to miss that one. But looking over record breaking year, last year they had 14 teams. This year they had 20. And that makes this very interesting because the, Mm -hmm. the teams are a lot deeper. I think each team drafted eight people. And so that's 160 players, whereas in the past, it was closer to 100, right? So you have to go a lot deeper. You got to have a lot more value. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting. The top uh, draftees, so everybody, every team gets $200 in which to bid on players. I think it was Sean Deeb who went for the most uh, draft high, $112. I don't give a shit about that. What team did you pick that I'm going to pick a different team and see who fucking wins? I like... Team Reese, Ryan Reese, 2013 World Series of Poker main event winner. He got Corey Aldemir, who was the MVP of Speed last year's draft. You see the clock? Yeah, yeah. Come on. And he's just got some uh, really strong uh, members on that team. And I really like the value he got out of Dustin Dirksen and Brock Wilson. Ryan Lang, my buddy, my pal, big beard, my big buddy. Ryan Lang, your fucking team is awesome. Kevin Gerhardt, oh, four time WC bracelet winner, my buddy from Run of Reno. Perfect. Phil Ivey, Jim Calopy. Dario Sabatino, Isaac Campton. That's my team. I know for a fucking fact they're going to win. They're definitely going to go farther than your bullshit, Ryan Reese. I don't Ryan, know. Nice, but nice job. But I know for a fact Ryan Lang's team is my team. That team I Lang is fancy. Love. It's got Seidel. It's got Ivy. Seidel. I didn't see Seidel. Of course Seidel's in there. Yes. I don't know. It's a, fancy. Lot, of, a lot of lipstick on a pig in that one, I think. Your mother's not. What do you mean? Oh, oh, she's going to watch this show, too. I'm sorry, Pam Holloway. She is gonna, oh, she's going to so message sorry, you. Pam. And she will message you, and you know it. <laughs> Wow, so sorry. sorry about that Pam, one, Mama. I'm so sorry. He will not be oh, getting a ride home oh, from me no, today. No. <laughs> oh, God, what a way to wrap up calling the clock. I am so sorry, Pam Holloway. I love you. I made a gigantic mistake, and that's uh, that's how we're going to end calling the clock. Um, uh, let's move on into our interview with famous, wonderful WSP commentator of years and years. My favorite, my second favorite, one of my favorites, Lon McCarran. All right, it's time to bring in a guest, someone very special to the World Series of Poker. You may know him as one of the two voices of every main event, every WSOP, really since 2002. Lon McCarran, um, it's wonderful to welcome you to the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I've been wanting to be on this forever. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've had to work. How long have you had this? Yeah. this like a week. Now. Okay, that's what I thought. Three days. Three days. About, but yeah. you've had to work with a, a different Chad for all these years. Now you get a new one. I know. Every bit, time right? he mentions Chad to me, I'm going, "Oh no!" And then I realize, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not a last name guy. So <laughs> true. It's true. I always refer to the first name only. So that's how I go. Um, Lon, it's uh, it's great to have you here. When did you get into Vegas? 
I got here, what day is it? I, don't uh, know. The, I got like here Friday a couple days now. ago, I Something guess, day. the day before the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, oh, there you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. So you're here for the TOC. Okay, we'll get to that soon. Okay. But, um, you know, we uh, it's, this is episode two of the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. We had Ty Stewart for episode one, a great way to start the WSOP and to start our very first uh, show together. And now I'm excited. So to- you're just on six foot four and six foot five people so far. Yeah, that's actually, true. that's uh, it's our requirement. Yeah, <laughs> that's it good. doesn't matter if you're in poker or not. We just know you two. So from here, it's basketball players, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Helm is like a 6'5 or something. Yeah, 6'6 yeah. six, six yeah. even. Yeah, yeah that, that'll work, I suppose. I know Phil Gordon's phone number if you want. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, so, Lon, I want to... Uh, you've had such a rich history at the World Series of Poker um, with your career starting in 2002. I would love to just talk to you about some of those memories. And first, how how did this whole thing come about for you? Oh, wow. Like every other job I had throughout my career, it, it, somebody just called me from ESPN and says, do you want to do this really stupid, weird event that nobody else at ESPN wants to do? <laughs> Which I started back in 92. And that's how I paid my mortgage for many years. And so, yeah, it was uh, a guy I knew who I had done a, uh, literally I'd done a snow shovel racing story with him in Angel Fire, New Mexico and his company. And then he was going to do a poker event. And then he knew somebody who had shot the O2 main event, but hadn't aired it yet. And so in January of 03, I got a call saying, hey, do you want to do this main event? Uh, that was happened eight months ago. And you're going to do it with Gabe Kaplan. I said, oh, OK. They, they didn't do the post-production till till 2003 they didn't even know nobody edited it until 2003 wow and <laughs> actually they didn't they didn't finish editing it till after it was supposed to go on the air he missed his deadline uh while we were voicing the show in, here in las vegas not far down flamingo um there there was an edited he was saying okay during this section there's you're going to see this eventually but we weren't we were seeing black on the video and so we were <laughs> oh having to make it up like oh that so gosh. it was it was a very interesting entree it, it's funny for me everybody was the 2003 WSOP the money maker effect right mine was actually the 2022 or the 2002 Robert Varconi my yeah. and my cousin had recorded it on a VHS tape off of ESPN and then brought it over for us to watch and that's how we learned between that and rounders we pieced together how to play no limit hold them based oh, on right? yeah <laughs> and then then we started playing and then of course money making the next year but I'll always remember it was the 2002 with Robert Varconi and then shaving Phil Helmuth's head mm-hmm. because he ended up winning it which unfortunately I mean Lon, we could ask Lon all those questions about Phil's head but he wasn't there that's true. Yeah, that's true. No, in until but like I felt I was later. there. It sounded like I was there, though, didn't it? Yeah. It and I'm glad you mentioned Varconi because I was talking about that with Jason Somerville. He was at my table yesterday. There, I thought really there is a Varconi effect because it was on national TV and it was an amateur uh, who was winning the main event. And uh, I actually saw Robert at a charity event in Long Island about a month ago, and he was just hanging out with the guys. And his wife Olga is still a better player. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. I mean, he should have had a better last name. Really. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, it's amazing. Just, it's his own fault. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Lon, <clears throat> over the years, we just want to hear some memories you've had. You know, this is a uh, 2023. It's the 54th annual WSP. This is going to be your what? 23rd, I think. 23rd, I think so. I can't do oh. math. Yeah, I keep doing the math because I always forget to include the first year. I'm so I was actually in an elevator going to two, three, four, five, but I think twenty third. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so when it comes to like those early, those early recipes, um, do you have any like favorite memories that were just something we just never, we potentially have never heard about? Oh yeah, there were things. Uh, just my learning curve on every part of it. I mean, broadcast notwithstanding, but um, mistaking actually Phil Gordon for Phil Helmuth in 03 uh, because I had heard about, oh yeah, Phil Helmuth is a big, tall, lanky guy and his name's Phil. And I, first day I was like, oh, Phil Helmuth is, no, I'm Phil Gordon. Already at that point, there, <laughs> there was a stigma on Phil Helmuth's name. Oh no, um, that's right. So yeah, that uh, and then just learning the process that we were going to be doing um, and, you know, missing flights in New York when we were back doing the, the voiceover because they did it a different way and took a lot longer. And um, and how big poker be, began or became after all those years was just amazing. And to be part uh, of that and riding the beast through those years where, you know, I ended up um, hosting many charity events for uh, the Clinton Foundation and he had star studded celebrities and I've. I won a signed saxophone by finishing second one year that, you know, all everybody signed and poker being one of the shows that Tina Fey wrote into 30 rock one year and all, I mean, we were up against, 
I think like eight to 10 poker shows at one point, you know, which is unheard of. Um, and just seeing that whole wave and seeing the evolving of, uh, of poker in general in the mass media, in culture, um, and how much uh, of the lingo of poker became part of regular culture uh, lingo. Um, and yeah, to look back on that now is, is just amazing. And the, the relationships I've made and, and the people I've gotten to know over the years and the travel I've been able to enjoy too. Do you have a crazy, what's your craziest story from those two that you can think of? Oh, maybe the first year that we started doing the November 9. And um, just as a, a little backstory to that, the programs originally produced by 441 Productions took a long time. And actually, the first time we went to New York, I, I, we were, there were weeks. It, it was probably six week production for each show, but there were many shows in progress at a time that had several producers. So um, Norman and I get to uh, New York to do the first shows. And Matt Morantz, the producer, comes out with this weird look on his face, like, you know, he's sick. <laughs> and um, everything that they had worked on in the last six weeks got was being moved and it got into a, a, like a, a pinch point of digital electronics. And it all got washed <laughs> away. <laughs> everything got no, was gone no. that they had worked on for six weeks. Oh, and so then they worked you know, tirelessly just for days on end, nonstop to get something ready for us to work on when we were there. So, you know, that's one thing that, that, uh, was crazy. And, and just, um, you know, the dedication, I've never worked uh, on a program before with the dedication of the people behind it and so many people, but going back to the end of that story, when we got to Vegas, we were doing the November nine and it was going to air that day or the next day. The pay-per-view stuff. Around and so there there. were like, six or seven editing bays and the cameras were changing tapes every half hour on the Penn and Teller stage. And, uh, we were on call 24 seven. They're waking us up at three in the morning, find notes under my door and says, be down in the announce booth at 4 AM because we got to announce this. And it's got all, and they really strove to make it look like a show that had taken six weeks to edit and they pulled it off. And that, kind of kill the golden goose because then everybody expected that after that and it was the producers going oh what have we created mm -hmm. wow. and so now it's live and that's what they created yeah absolutely i wanted to ask about uh, a poker legend who recently passed away and that's doyle brunson yeah of course and he was so instrumental to poker as a whole but especially the world series of poker and even in those early days during the moneymaker boom when it was the transition from the horseshoe then to the rio now we're back at the horseshoe i'll be yeah, at a different location nice. but do you have any fond memories any stories about doyle brunson that you can share with us um yeah the, well the first time uh i really interacted with him the producers probably uh, i don't know the year but you know early aughts you know 06 07 something like that wanted me to do kind of this with the, you know, the uh, Mount Rushmore of poker, you know, right. with, with Phil and, and Phil and, uh, and Doyle and Chris Moneymaker. And so I'm, I'm one on four talking to these guys and I was scared to death because <laughs> I s knew that I didn't know that much that they knew about poker, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I was a little intimidated, but I found him and the others to be very gracious and very easy to talk with. And um, they respected my knowledge as a journalist. If I, if I didn't know that much about poker, I knew how to ask questions and knew where to go. And so uh, it was a very easy uh, conversation. And, um, you know, later on, he's, you know, he seemed to like it, and which was nice. And then uh, my most uh, latest one was, um, was it two years ago or last year when we played that it was fall. The yeah, fall the fall 2020. Yeah, the fall, right. And so we, uh, I was in the production truck, and I got a call from my boss, Maria Scandani, to come down to the feature table. Okay, I'm busy, but okay. I went down there, and there was Norman and Vince Vaughn and Doyle and an empty seat next to Doyle. They said, we want you to play a sit-and-go uh, and kind of introduce Vince as, you know, the uh, master of ceremonies for World Series. So I'm sitting next to Doyle playing poker, mm. and... Um, it was crazy. Be, uh, I mean, just, I got hands, you know, I ended up uh, knocking out everyone with Vince Vaughn. Um, but I had jacks, which is, you know, the Lon McCarran Memorial hand. <laughs> and then I hit a jack. Doyle had ace queen, which he's written about. He, he hates ace queen. And the queen comes and he bet. And I knocked him out like that. But before that, we're sitting there and just joshing around. People were joking. And, and 
he nudged me, you know, and who I, I didn't think he knew who, if I was, you know, who was next to me, you know, who, he didn't even know I was there, but he nudged me and it kind of startled me and he holds up his card and had 10 deuce and he folded. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I nearly man. cried right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, we're going to see a lot of people playing 10 deuce this summer. I have a few. Oh, didn't, have you played it? Have you seen it? I, I, I got dealt it yesterday. I'm going. Ah, I want to. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, and the uh, casino employees are waiting for it, but I never got it, uh, unfortunately. But what a story to be able to say you played with Doyle. I know oh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of players were sharing on social media their experiences with playing with him. But I think for most amateurs, Jesse, myself, and uh, many others, never got that chance. We've been around him. We've seen him play. We've interviewed him, but we never actually got and to I, sit down Yeah, I didn't really play with him, but I did play with him. Right. You know, so that's what's fun. And the best thing about uh, the Ten Deuce is that it might wipe away the memory of Jack Four. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, you know, Blonde, before we get into your uh, your your circuit win from last year, that's just so awesome. Do we have see. enough time for that? I think we have okay. plenty of time for it. <laughs> plenty of time for it. Um, I want to ask you one more question about your memories. Do you have, over the years, do you have any favorite WSP main event winner that you got to deal with or get to interview? Um it, just on a personal level, just because I called it, maybe <laughs> is Martin Jacobson, uh, who came in as a, as a short stack. And um, I, I kind of picked him, but I saw him. Uh, I thought he played a perfect final table uh, from what I knew and my limited knowledge at that point and ended up winning it. And just such a, a gracious gentleman, a great player. Um, but the thing about, you know, this game and and the beauty of the television show is that if, if you pick anybody out, they're going to have a story. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to to really figure out. Uh, and and it's, that's the draw of watching the show. You know, the hands are going to come and go um, and the moments are all going to all going to be great for the winner and dramatic for the for the second place person. But. Everyone has a story, and, and you guys do a great job bringing that out, and we try to bring that as well. And so it's just learning. These are human beings, and and they have suffered the ups and downs. And I think every poker player in Doyle was another one who said, you know, I've been broke, you know, two dozen times. And <laughs> and so, yeah, from there, it's like, why did you get into it? Who and when and, and how and yeah. all like that? And those are, those are great questions, and they bring great answers. So I love the people that play the event. It's the same event every year. It's the same game. But it's totally different every right. year, and that's the beauty of it. Yep. Well, moving on, Lon went to uh, his local casino, Thunder Valley. My home casino. His home casino. Uh, great stuff there, who I love personally. Have you been there yet? I have. Ben Irwin and his crew oh, up there. Amazing. amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it up there. Yeah, Cutter, they're all, the whole crew is great. Um, we so, had a great meal. Did I buy that for you, or you buy that? Oh, Ben. And that's high stakes. Ben, ben paid yeah. high stakes, didn't he? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Stakes. Stakes. Great name, right? In it the is. casino, mm -hmm. high stakes. Not like high stakes poker. High yeah, stakes is in the in the meal. I guess in cow. Yeah. Chad's so impressed by this word, by this pun. I love puns. Good Lord. Um, Lon, tell us about your circuit win. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it just, you know, one of those tournaments that everything seemed to fall into place, you know, where I, I was doing things that I should have been doing as far as, you know, maybe here I need to shove with my, you know, flush draw like that. And I did and got called and, and kept hitting my flush draws. And it always happened right on a break. And it was just me and the other person, everyone else had, had gone. Um, I had dinner last night actually with one of the women. It was both women two times with the flush for some reason. And one of the women I knocked out was uh, Miguel, a uh, floor man at Thunder Valley. His wife was one of yeah. the person I knocked out. She's <laughs> forgiven me, but she <laughs> now claims that I am, you know, I rode her chips to my oh, circuit course, win. And so, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun and it just seemed to happen. And, you know, you got to run good. And and I was cautious. I folded a lot, which you need to do, I think, mm -hmm. also. It's underrated and didn't try to push the action that much and just let it kind of come to me. And it was fun. And and uh, come midnight or so, when, when I finally won, uh, several good friends were around me and, and cheering. And, of course, the folks I know, just through uh, Thunder Valley and poker were there too. And, and great friends with Ben and his staff. And so Ben was there to interview me at the end. It was, it was, it was touching. And, and the, the cache of having the ring um, has it followed me all around the world. Like three days later, I went to play a circuit event and uh, events in Morocco. And some guy from Malaysia comes up to me and congratulates me on my ring. <laughs> it's like, wow, <laughs> it reverberated. Awesome. And so it's been really nice and very touching. And, um, I felt a little closer to the poker community after that, I think. 
Yeah, no, it's, you it's, would know that. Right. Well, no, it's true. And it, I wrote the story and we published it shortly after within hours of you winning. And it was a big story. Like we can tell when it, something catches fire. So is that right? Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of comments. And where's the ring now? The ring is in my hotel room. And yes, I actually uh, I was wearing it before I went to play. <laughs> each day. I'm a little embarrassed to say. But then I sat down and there was a guy next to me wearing his bracelet that he won online. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't going to wear it. It doesn't fit any of my fingers. But I felt I uh, needed a little mojo. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, by winning that, you did get in, uh, you know, you qualified for the Tournament of Champions, which is happening right now as we speak. I think it's yes. the final day. It is. You're Why with aren't us. You up there? Yeah. yeah. No, I know. You're here. So, yeah, we're on a long break. I got oh, a long okay. break. They <laughs> said, take, take a break. <laughs> but what was that experience like getting to play with people who have won rings or bracelets or whatnot throughout the, yeah. the last year? You know, really the champions. Everyone's, Everyone's a winner. winner. Everyone's a winner there. And, um, Norman wasn't there. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I was I was uh, talking with with uh, my cohort Jeff Platt yesterday after I got knocked out, and it was a really interesting experience because on day two, a uh, day one was 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 great. Uh, the table seemed pretty lackadaisical. Nobody was crazy wanting to you know make big raises. I think there were min raises all day long, and. Then I caught some cards late and I, I got, a, I built a good stack. And so then day two, we're moved into the horseshoe and I thought I was going to be in the first big main room here. And then I see I'm in the gold seats and I, and I work in that room. I've worked in that room for 23 years, whether it's here or at the Rio or downtown. Um, and it was really weird walking in because uh, my seat in, in the two seat um, faced the mothership mm -hmm. and with the banners and with the marquee going and it, I, I know what the lights are for and it, but still there was an extra glow to them and, and a little, you know, got the heart going a little bit, you know, it was exciting to be there to pl a play with an opportunity to move to that next step. So, um, it was great. I felt, I felt like a real newbie walking in there, even though I've been in that room, you know, a hundred times just walk in and go, wow, here I am. Yeah, it's that, nice. That's pretty. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for circuit winners and for anybody who can't come here to play normally. But the, to funnel them here to do that is, is wonderful. Right. I think it's amazing that you've been doing this as long as you have and still get that feeling. I, I really did. And I Chad, do, too, yeah. when I get the chance to play. Right. It's, yeah. it's one thing to be on the uh, other side of the table and then one to actually sit down and compete and then to get a little taste of victory like you did yeah. in the circuit ring. And uh, it's just it is pretty incredible. And you also get the respect of the players when they realize you are a player yourself. Agreed. And and so yesterday, uh, and I love the rule. It really helped me out that when we're hand for hand, and we went hand for, they paid a hundred. We went hand for hand at one hundred two, and um, I, I like I said, a good stack, little card dead, and the action's a little heavier on day two. And I wish somebody would write a book about how to survive day two of tournaments, uh, specifically because I can't. Um, but they don't let players wander around and look at other stacks. Right. So I'm like hovering over my chat my stack and when we were on the bubble i had seven thousand in my stack and the blinds were like eight thousand i think or something like that and the button had just gone by me mm. and so uh everybody at the table was very supportive they said uh, you know we really hope you make it and i but during break i noticed there was a little stack you know taking stacks out and and so finally the bubble burst and and the one guy who started says i hope you you know, make it. I said, oh, is that why you check raise bluffed me like four <laughs> hands ago? He says, no, I didn't. And the table said, yes, you did. You showed seven four. <laughs> but no, I didn't. And he's number two stack coming in today. So, wow. That was great. You just mentioned a book. I just got to ask. You've been in this poker industry a long time. We've been asking you about these stories. You ever think about writing a poker book? Because I know it's something that Jesse and I would both be anxious to Oh, read. wow. Uh, you know, there's so many books out there. And, and I've always recognized the fact that even though you know, poker has made its way into the, the culture and, and popular culture and TV shows and, and celebrities love it. That I, I just don't know how much appeal there would be outside the poker world because you and I know that we can be here and walk a block away when we're at the Rio. We go down to the, you know, the Thai restaurant a block away and it's like people have no idea the World Series right. poker is happening. But I don't know. Maybe so. What do you have? I have Norman Chad's book. 
Oh, you I mean, do? You have? I mean, I mean, I have and it, and I he have, can write a book. Surely you can write yeah, a book. Yeah, Lon, I mean, come on, dude. Your excuses yeah, aren't really going to work I'll here. I'll take me to the hospital in the morning at halftime. <laughs> right. Yeah, is actually a picture of him? I've never seen this. I know you got it. I heard you got oh, it. Oh, yeah. I've had this like 17 times. I, I, keep, I keep getting it signed by him and give it away. So this will he be didn't sign it? He'll sign it sometime this week, and I'm going to give it away in the oh Twitter contest. Oh, my God, look at that picture of him. Can you see that? Oh, it's hilarious, isn't it? That old picture of him? Yeah, I've seen old CNN pieces of him. Yeah, he's. I keep wanting to write a book with him. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. And he, his experiences with this apparently were not great. He says, you write it, I'll, I'll write the blah, the blurg or whatever they call it, <laughs> you know, the forward. Speaking of things that you have or do with Norman Chad, you guys were both nominated for the Poker Hall of Fame a couple of years back. Yeah, twice, I think. Twice, yeah. And, uh, you know, what? that's a, I love poker history. Jesse does, who we both love the Poker Hall of Fame. And uh, just what an honor that must have been to, uh, to be nominated. I think we both agree that you guys deserve to be in. That's Could nice. happen this year. Uh, but uh, what was it like, you know, when you learned that you were going to be nominated? I, uh, I actually was surprised. And people have been talking about that for a while. And it's nice that people regard us as um, such a big part of the success of the World Series. And, and of course, we're just standing on people's shoulders that, you know, work behind the scenes. Um, but uh, it's a broken system. And, you know, there's 50 people that need to be in there before we are. And um, so we'll, we'll figure that out. You know, Ty Stewart, I love Ty. And he's been so supportive to us. And he says, nope, last year was like one year, one person, you know, <laughs> like that. And so it's their show. Yeah, um, yeah. and it, you know, I, Matt Savage, you know, from the competing WPT world, you know, needs to be in as well. And so, um, yeah, to be part of that group and, and be part of the conversation is, is a great honor. Like I said, it is kind of like, you know, winning a tournament, you know, and, and having that recognition and people reaching out and, and once again, you know, acknowledging what we do and, you know, with our work, we always love people to say nice job. I mean, we all need a little pat on the back and that's, oh, yeah. that's a great pat on the back. I, I think we have one final question and for me. Oh, we have a caller? Of- uh, no, no, one, one, oh, one, we don't one, do one, unfortunately, all we have is a little, I don't know what this thing is anyways. Okay, go ahead. But we have one final question. It's the most important question, in my opinion. Uh, have you heard about Lon's new nickname? Uh, I have not, no. Oh, wow, wow. wow. Oh, really? Are you not on social media at all, Chet no, Holloway? not lately. Jeez, he's just here He just writes out. it. He doesn't um, read it. Lon, Lon has a brand new nickname, thanks to Jamie Cursor, and it's taking over social media. It's Llama Karen. Llama Karen. So she, Jamie swears she was not high when yeah, she okay. texted me sure. the other day. She and, and Chad, she said, she said, for some reason, she was saying my he, my name in her head really fast. And it came to Llama Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, can I please tweet this out? And I said, well, I have a nick. I, have, I never had a nickname. I, I got a nickname. And it's taken off. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's already a gif out there of like a llama with a pink Karen haircut. Yeah. It's like, my I goodness. think you might have done that. I don't think I was. I found it. I saw it. I loved it. My goodness. But um, but are you uh, are you appreciative of this new nickname? Do you think uh, so? You know, it's not bad. And uh, the moniker Karen is not really the greatest uh, in this day and age. No, it's not. But, no, but. Um, I think it's taken in a different way. You know, um, I, I have had... You know, lady friends of the past, actually, who I, I could never, I said, we can't get married because I did date one named Karen. And that would be awful, oh, you know, if she yeah. wanted to take my name, you know, Karen, Karen it's kind of like the same. <laughs> so yeah. that one, but, but, you know, it's still going today. And, and the company I'm working for uh, uh, out of uh, Britain right now, I'm just becoming a spokesperson for main event travel. And even they're writing stuff on their Twitter accounts about Llama Karen. They <laughs> go Llama Karen with the llama. That's right. That's right. I, actually, Thanks for bringing it up. Well, Jesse. sure. Actually, I mean, speaking of main event travel, I heard there's a contest too. Is it still running? Oh yeah. They've got a contest. Yeah. If, if you sign up, uh, uh, or if your travel's done with manimatravel.com and then you make a, a bracelet final table, you get a portion of all your travel paid for. If you win it, you get a hundred percent of everything you've paid for. Uh, yeah, there's stipulations. Oh, and just wear the patch or something like that, right? Like, uh, yeah, wear yeah. the patch, take a picture, yeah. say bracelet frenzy or whatever the hashtag's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw it. I'm like, can I enter this? No, because I live in Vegas. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> well, you have gas prices. Yeah, okay. The gas I, I price of gas, that's get, huge. I don't think you can run Ubers through abandonment travel yet. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Oh, your travel <laughs> expenses. That's yeah. what it says. Okay, well, there you go. I'm, I'm your loophole here, baby. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Well, it's been wonderful having uh, Lama Karen. Lama Karen. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yeah, the, the voice, voice of, of poker the, is the, now the, Lama Karen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lon. Uh, good luck this summer. Hope that you uh, you run good in any events you play. Oh, actually, are you going to play anything else? I don't have anything scheduled right now. Maybe late in June. I've got to go. Uh, so I go home tomorrow, and then I have some what they call travel 
dentistry in Puerto Vallarta. I've got some mm. extraction after we've done, so I'm going to a Puerto Vallarta dentist for 25% of the price of U.S., by yeah. the way, healthcare U.S. And then I'm back here next week for two final tables in uh, New Orleans to visit my daughter, and then I'll have cool. some time at the end of the month maybe to play. Cool, cool. Well, we'll, we'll see you around, and uh, good luck when you get the chance to play. Great to talk to you guys. This is number two for you? Episode two. two. Yeah, you're, uh, you're the deuce. You're I'm the deuce. deuce. Right. <laughs> Dropping the deuce with yeah. Lon. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lon. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. It was another good one. We will be back next Tuesday, and you can catch the, all these episodes every Tuesday, Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I want to thank another quick sponsor, BBO Poker Table. They gave us these chairs, this table, and, of course, Global Poker. Uh, Jesse, it's been a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see who the next guest is going to be. You might know. Yeah, I think I do know him, uh, but I still have to say sorry to Pam Holloway. She'll forgive you. Okay. She's pretty quick, too. Thank God. We'll see you guys next time.